starting over financially after divorce, it takes a lot of planning, and that's why our financial advisor, Eric Brotman, is here to help us with some tips. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, not easy dealing, not easy period emotionally, but financially it can be devastating as well. Yeah, uh, a divorce is one of the most expensive things that a family can go through, and uh, it, it's taxing emotionally and financially. It's, it's like setting up a whole second residence. And some people don't even realize how taxing it can be until they actually go through that process. Yeah, it, it's very difficult to afford. It really, really is, and if it can be avoided by all counts, it sure should be. Obviously, so one of the things you say first is really take inventory of your finances. What do you have? Yeah, because you're starting over. You literally have to have to take that inventory and start over and say, okay, what assets do I have? What liabilities do I have? What am I responsible for? What's my cash flow look like? I mean, it's a, it's a totally new game. And then adjust your expectations? Yeah, I think the idea of, of living as lavishly as you might have before is, is a pipe dream. I think there, there's a, a lot that you have to give up, whether it's vacation or travel or entertainment or other things. And so then, in, to that regard, you really have to watch your pennies. You do. You do. Budgeting takes an all, new, uh, an all new meaning when things are that tight. I mean, just imagine a second BGE bill, a second Verizon bill, a second whatever. It, it's tough. And so maybe your credit report could suffer depending on whether your spouse was sort of the heavy hitter on the credit report, maybe you were, that sort of thing. Yeah, one of the things you want to do is pull your credit reports, all three bureaus, that's uh, Equifax, mm -hmm. Experian, and TransUnion, pull them all and make sure anything that's joint gets off of there quickly and that any of those accounts get closed promptly so that you don't have a former spouse run up a, a credit problem for you. A lot of women may change their name, but another mm -hmm. thing that everyone should take a look at is their beneficiaries, is that right? Yeah, because the default uh, the default setting when you mm -hmm. sign up for a 401k is the spouse and it doesn't change automatically just because you get divorced. So you want to make sure you go in and manually change that to kids or someone else. Uh, same thing with life insurance, uh, IRAs, any account, uh, the beneficiary trumps the will. So even if you adjust your estate planning documents and you do a new will, make sure you change the beneficiaries on absolutely everything or you're leaving a bunch of money to your former spouse. And talking about your accounts too, you want to really take a look at what the benefits are where you work. Correct, because this is a qualifying event. So when you get divorced, it's an opportunity to, to relook at your benefits, select new ones because you may have been on your former spouse's plan, and this is an opportunity to, to completely separate yourself from him or from her. Okay, and so a lot of times they'll say, you know, the most stressful things are death and taxes. Divorce certainly up there on the list yeah. of the most stressful. but. You're often counseled not to make big decisions right away when you go through something like this. Any traumatic event, and divorce is definitely traumatic, uh, you want to take your time. I, I, I usually counsel folks to try not to make big decisions for at least a year. Mm -hmm. you know, don't go out and buy a new house just because you, you, you feel like you need to change your pace and those kinds of things until you have a, a chance to not only take inventory and see where you are, but to understand what life is going to be like. It's a, it's a different lifestyle, too. And avoid whim spending. Uh, avoid whim spending, for sure. Okay, thanks, Eric. Really appreciate it. Thank you.